Hey, what's up, YouTube? We're back here in CL Play with, you know, our, really our first defensive ebook defensive guide here in a little bit. We're talking about this nickel 3 3 double mug, the double A gap. Um, you know, they did do a little bit of nerfing to this. So we're going to talk about, you know, ways that, you know, we can still use it to our advantage and, you know, get stops using it because um, it's still pretty good defense. So that's what we're going to be talking about here in this video. But don't forget to go below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check me on TikTok for more short video tip clips. Turn those notifications on here on YouTube. And that's pretty much all I got. Let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to talk about here is, you know, the all out. The all out blitz that we all, you know, have seen before, all have grown accustomed to. Um, really, all you want to do with your user is kind of stand right here so that you can guard like a running back table route if they decide to put it on the field. Um, and then all you want to do is really just pinch your defensive line down so crash slant them inside and then pass commit we talked about it earlier in the week where pass committing makes all any blitzes you have you even want to pass commit anytime you know they're passing pass commit even a three-man rush will be greatly benefited from pass commit here but let's just say they block their running back here and so we take the snap and boom you're able to see we're just able to walk right in the backfield that's six against seven and you know the quarterback's down immediately and the reason is because you know even though they tried to patch this blitz or you know make this blitz a little bit worse here you're just able to see we're still able to get one guy one mugger one a gap mugger we're able to get him right into the backfield and the, if i can get onto him here and it forces the running back to have to pick him up and then off the edge to tackle He's looking inside for some reason. I don't really understand the programming in this game. You can see the other tackle, 78. He's looking outside to, you know, block the end. But 64, for some reason, just completely whiffs, misses the guy. And, you know, the quarterback's down immediately now. Even if 64 ended up blocking his guy, I would say that number zero, since he's already in the backfield, he can just easily push the running back backwards and you'll bring him down. So there's this is very easy. This is kind of the setup that everyone kind of shows you and as to why this defense is so annoying to play against because one, it's hard to block. There is a way to block it. And you know, I talked about that. I could talk about it again here in another video, but anytime you have a blitz, it's hard to block. Um, you know, it's gonna be a huge challenge for the offense. So six against seven here, they literally have the numbers advantage here. We're still just able to walk in the backfield in like half a second. So that's six against seven. What's up, YouTube? Before we jump back in this video, I need you guys to go hit me with a follow on social media. My TikTok and my Twitch are BLT for Life 21. It's going to be on the screen. And then my Instagram and my Twitter is BLT for Life 22. Go hit me with a follow over there. We'll definitely make a better college football and really Madden player. I upload tips on both of those on all my social media. So hit me with a follow over there and let's jump right back into the video. All right, now let's say they audible to a defense where. You know they're able to max protect on opposite side so this is kind of the optimal you know way to block a blitz you want to have a tight end and running back on opposite sides and they're going to just max protect basically we're still going to be able to get this blitz to walk in the backfield so all we want to do this time is we're going to crash inside again we're going to pass commit and this time if we know that they're pass commit, and excuse me, if we know they're max protecting, we're coming with our users so now it's going to be seven against seven and i don't know why i kept saying the last one was um six against seven it was six against six now this is seven on seven here we're just going to make it even we want to keep we want to try to keep the numbers um we don't want to really give them an advantage because this blitz they can't block this blitz when it's even they need extra guys to help block this blitz and so we don't want to benefit them by you know blitzing less guys now there is a way to get this blitz to come in like four against six um which we're going to talk about later but for right now i mean when when they don't have a numbers advantage, you're just able to see, we take the snap here, quarterback down very quickly. Now, what ended up happening right there is, you know, their tackles, they do a much better job of, you know, looking outside and actually blocking. Well, actually, they really didn't. The tight end just was able to help pick them up here. But honestly, this is one of the best pass rushers in the game lined up against the tight end. And the tight end did a surprisingly good job of holding his ground for a pretty long time. So I would say normally that doesn't happen here. But you're able to see once again what happens. One of our A gap blitzers. This time it's this guy. Um right here. He's able to just walk in the backfield. And now the running back has to pick him up. And you know, we end up getting another shed elsewhere. So quarterback's just down way too quickly. Um just 
like he's just down so quickly that it's just tough for them to have anywhere to go anything to call here with this play they need more time in the pocket to be able to set up routes down the field and then you can also see how many routes are they sending out they're literally sending three people um out here so it's very easy to be able to guard um someone when they're only sending out three routes it really doesn't take a whole lot that is seven against seven a nice little another easy blitz where you just call this they decide they want to match protect we just call our blitz uh to keep the numbers you know even on both sides and when we do that we're gonna have the advantage on defense all right so let's talk about another setup on defense here for us what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our defensive linemen into hard flats um, this is going to be the four-man rust I was talking about. What we want to do, we're going to slant inside, we're going to pass commit, and then we're going to drop our defensive linemen into hard flats by pressing the, um, the D-pad to the left twice, then hitting X and hitting the left stick to the left. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, only we're going to do it for B here. So you're able to see play art, and then we're just going to pass commit. Now, we don't necessarily, we can just stand right over the center this time. We don't have to worry about, we have a hard flat over here, uh, if 23 goes out on the table out here. So let's just say they send five out, right? We're just gonna be able to see that, you know, we have pressure right up the A app once again. In order for them to, um, this is really good against people who have good pocket presence because they can't step up. They have to drift to, they have to drift to one way or the other, or they have to step back. You're just able to see if I do my normal routine, take the snap, cancel it, drop back, step up. I'm stepping right into, you know, just a sea of, of white defenders um, ready to, you know, bring the quarterback down. Um, and honestly, a lot of the time, the, one of these guys just walks in the backfield free when they don't block their running back right here. You know, the offensive line does a little bit better job, but they really have no pocket to step up into. They're forced to either, you see there's no one on the left side of 78 and there's no one on the right side of 64. So they have to, you know, either go one way or the other or drift back. And the problem with that is like, that's just not a viable way to play offense because you're cutting off half the field or you're making it to where you can't throw routes down the field. So this is pretty good at collapsing the pocket, especially early on, and it doesn't allow them to continue stepping up in the pocket and making their throws down the field a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and run the same defense. Go ahead and run this, just the same rep over again. And this time quarterback goes down even faster. You know, you run this over and over again. There's such thing as pass rush points in this game. And, you know, I feel like these defenders, they started get, getting better at pass rushing as the game goes on. Some of them, at least, some of them get worse. But right here, you're just able to see we create just a convoy in the middle. And what does that allow? Offensive lineman 76. You could just, not 76, 70. You could just see how soft some of these offensive linemen are. He is literally looking at this pile and just decides, oh, I don't want to touch the guy. And then by the time he decides he wants to block him, it's just too late. I mean, offensive linemen in this game, they're just so sorry sometimes, man. It's just so disgusting. But... You're just able to see that works for us on defense in the white. Um, just able to bring the quarterback down pretty quickly. You have a good user over the middle of the field too. That's one thing. You know, you don't really have to necessarily worry about the running back going out on a route. You can man up this running back with this uh, defensive lineman if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, just have a good user of the middle of the field because you know that that's, this quarterback, either he's going to get sacked pretty quickly like he does right here, or he's really going to have nowhere to step up into. So we have the sidelines, the little short sidelines taken away. So just having a good user um, over the top, you know, in that intermediate area because, you know, we have good man coverage over the top too. So that's, you know, that rep for him back to back time to kind of show you guys that we're able to collapse the pocket and make it tough on them once again. So I just did a video the other day talking about this cover two double Mabel and why it's so effective. And honestly, like I said, in that video, it can be run out of any defensive um, play. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the nickel 3-3 stack that I talked about, but it can be run out of anything. So we're going to run it here. We, we're going to cover zero defense just like we were in that video. And so that means our safeties are going to be pretty close to the ball. Now, we're going to um, slant inside pass commit and then we're going to drop b into a curl flat so it's going to look something like this and then you can set up the rest of the defense you know exactly how i have it but making sure that we're pass committing to make our blitz better and really only problem with this defense i guess you could say is that we have to use our a um, outside linebacker here now you could put a fast dude here make this a little bit better this is kind of a sneaky coverage that i like to run whenever you're clicked onto an outside linebacker or a defensive lineman kind of catches a lot of people including myself off guard so you know if they want to try to call a flood concept here 
Um, I don't think players are gonna show up because we're in practice mode. Um, but yeah, they go to send five out again and quarterback goes down immediately. We also have the sideline, the deep sideline and the short sideline taken away on both sides. It's really an annoying defense to play against because now they have nowhere to go in the sideline. So it's not like they can get rid of the ball immediately. And then they also just can't step up in the pocket and try to hit stuff down the field. There's just so much havoc and madness in the middle. And the reason why I like this is if, if you were to crash your defensive line outside, it would allow like 78 to actually block someone. Right here, 78 and really 64, both of these tackles, they literally just don't block anyone. That's why this is so good because it's a four on three, basically. Those dudes aren't really doing anything. They don't have their hands on anyone. They're not touching anyone. They're not blocking anyone. So they're basically doing nothing. You're creating a four on three in the middle and then the quarterback just is gonna go down super quickly now. Coverage aspect, we have this running back taper out guarded by this curl flat. Um, I wish he would even play this a little bit better, but it is what it is. Um, and then we also have a corner route. I mean, excuse me, a clap flat here to take away their corner route. I mean, this is just great defense. And then also you have your user, um, this outside linebacker here to, you know, take away this uh, backside, you know, dig route from the tight end. So, so many options here on defense with this. You just have an opportunity to, you know, whether you want to run the, the original um, blitz that we showed off to start the video, the all out blitz, if you want to run, um, the max protect beater where you're gonna use a rush them or you want to run a variation of this you can play cover three out of this defensive shell if you wanted to it's just really the blitz whatever defensive shell you want to cover call in the back end just make sure you have that blitz you know behind it to really heat up the quarterback and this double a gap is so annoying to play against because it's pretty hard to block um there's only a couple ways and only, i don't feel like a lot of people know how to do it so it's kind of annoying to block. And even when you do block, a lot of time you can't step up in the pocket because you just have a convoy in the middle, just a log jam or roadblock here of these white jerseys on defense. And you just can't step up. There's nowhere to step up into. So makes offense very annoying, but yeah, that's four of the best setups to use when you're calling this double A gap, you know, defense. Alrighty, and that's gonna do it for this video. A brief little breakdown on how you can use this nickel 33 double mug to, you know, wreak havoc for an offense here in college football 25. Not my favorite defense in the game. I do like the nickel 33 stack just a little bit better. That's why you guys see me using it in my gameplays. But undoubtedly, this is a blitz that I played against, and I don't really like playing against it. Um, it's very annoying to play against because you have to set protection for it literally every play. And if you don't, you're gonna see what happens. It's gonna be exactly what I just showed off. That's what happens. I mean, that even happens sometimes when you do set protection. So this defense, it's very like random, which plays to your advantage on defense because as an offense, I don't know what's gonna happen. Even if I set protection, sometimes it even walks in. So this is not fun to play against. Make sure you guys are implementing this in your defensive arsenal, these playbooks that even have this 3-3 stack. Um, it has the 3-3 over the 3-3 minute. It has some dime packages it has this double mug so some of these defensive playbooks are very versatile and you can run a lot of different good stuff so definitely uh, use this to your advantage but don't forget below hit the like button hit the subscribe button turn the notifications on check me out on tiktok for more short video tip clips and i will see y'all in the next video peace